such a cute episode. I mean, I know many are gonna write this episode off as filler, not really regarded as anything important, but I felt like it was. This was a very sweet episode. It was so... It was so different from the normal episodes of Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z, or, or Dragon Ball Super. Actually, this reminds me more of Dragon Ball than anything else. And I love, I love this episode. It was adorable and the meaning behind it, but also Pan's potential. It, it was just, I don't know how to explain it. It was such a good episode. Even without action, without, you know, characters beating the shit out of each other, it was still a wonderful episode. And I'm really going to be upset if I see many people write this episode off as trash. I, I really will. Now, when it comes to the art and animation, it wasn't the best. I'm going to just tackle that right now. But besides that, when it came to the actual writing of this episode, it was surprisingly amazing for a Slice of Life type episode for Dragon Ball. I mean, this is as Slice of Life as you can get for a Dragon Ball episode. And Pan, I, I love getting to see Pan have a little bit of the spotlight. I mean, we got to see her at the end of Dragon Ball Z, and don't even talk about GT, okay? Don't even talk about that shit. But we get to see Pan at the end of Dragon Ball Z a little bit growing up in the tournament, and... When we get to see her baby form, we come to find out the potential of her, how strong she is, and it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Take a moment to think about it. Pan is able to already use Ki, and she's able to fly at a young age. Like, I think she's only six months old, or maybe a little bit older, maybe a little bit less, I don't know. But she is really fucking young being able to fly. Do, don't you all remember... When Dragon Ball Z got to Goten's introduction, like when Goten was finally introduced, you remember how we had that entire little mini arc with Videl and Goten trying to learn how to fucking fly? Like, don't you remember that shit? Don't you remember when Dragon Ball Z focused like a couple episodes on that? I do. I remember. I remember watching that. And when I see Pan already flying, it's like, Pan's already passively shitting on Goten, like, oh, oh, it took you a very long time to fly, look at me, I can fly already. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? So, I mean, Pan can already fly, and she was out way high up in the sky, They're like, that's ridiculous, you remember how Gohan was saying to Goten, like, hey, don't go too high now, so you can't control it and all that, remember? He didn't allow Goten to go too high, Pan was already to the Fuck, like, almost to space. That, that's how crazy Pan was. I'm like, yo, damn, Pan. Yeah, you, you're just way beyond any other Saiyan we've seen so far at a young age. I mean, if she could already fly at this age, that would mean that she could possibly eventually turn into a Super Saiyan. And I would love that. Pan would be the first female Super Saiyan in Dragon Ball. I would love to see that. I would love to see the design of a female Super Saiyan transformation. But Pan, though, the potential she has right here really astounds me. And I wonder what is going to be done with this. Because, as we know... Dragon Ball Super most likely is going to continuously build up into the point of the end of Dragon Ball Z. Like, I, I could see Super ending right when we get to Oob's introduction, where he's in the tournament with Goku. I could see where Dragon Ball Super kind of ends around there. But I would really love to see what would happen with Pan growing up. Like, what is her potential? Because for her to be that strong already, I wonder what she could do in the future, and also how far she could go. So... Uh, other moments of this episode besides that, there was some really funny parental moments throughout this episode. Like, Piccolo, oh my god. I, I know it's not something brand new to anyone. Many people have joked about this in the past. And I watch Team 4 Star, and I, I don't know how many of you achievements watch Team 4 Star, but I, I love Team 4 Star. And it really g gets you thinking when you think about how bad of a parent, you know, Goku is. And then you see Piccolo, how he's like a father to Gohan. And when you see Piccolo in this episode, I was just thinking about Team 4 Star, if they were to ever, you know, kind of bridge this. And seeing Piccolo being like a fucking father figure, or a grandpa figure to Pan, I was just laughing my ass. I was like, oh, Pan likes this certain amount of food and all that. Telling Chi-Chi how to care for Pan. I'm just laughing my ass off. Like, Piccolo's just listing off everything. He's like, you need to brush your teeth and all that i'm like bro piccolo you're, you're so amazing Th this is why i love piccolo so much he was such a good character in dragon ball z and seeing how he's actually being more of a parental figure to pan it, it just 
it's crazy. He's even more of a grandpa than he was to Gohan. For instance, he was like a father figure to Gohan. But in this, it's like he's more of a father figure slash more of a grandpa in this, you know, time with Pan. Like, he's kind of relaxed a little bit more. Peaceful times. And seeing how he was reacting to Goku and all that, it's like, you let Pan out of your sight and all that? He's getting all pissed off and shit. I just couldn't help but laugh. So, Piccolo... Never change. I love your character so much. You're such a good fucking character. And just seeing him care for Pan like that puts a smile on my face. I, I love Piccolo. He's really underappreciated in a way. And I, I really hope people just get to see the greatness of Piccolo in this episode. Now, another thing, too, that I need to take note of is the Bulma scene with Vegeta. That, oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Let's just get the elephant out of the room. Bulma got out of the shower fucking naked, okay? And she was talking to Vegeta. And let's all just think about this for a second. I love how this Vegeta slash Bulma, this romantic moments between them, are being shown a whole lot more in Dragon Ball Super. Because in Dragon Ball Z, we didn't get to see none of that. We, we really didn't. Now, Vegeta at the end of Dragon Ball Z, he opened up more and realized all the love he really had for his family. He finally pretty much said the truth of how much he cared for everyone. Well... With this, we get to see more of Vegeta being a husband to Bulma. And when Bulma walks out of the shower and all that, it just goes to show you the relationship. Like, she honestly thought Vegeta was sitting on the bed and all that, and she didn't think nothing of it as she came out of the shower. And I love seeing that. I just love seeing how Bulma and Vegeta are just such a great husband and wife. It's just it's so surprising, because it's a side of Vegeta and Bulma we don't really get to see. And we've seen it a little bit in Dragon Ball Super, a whole lot more than Dragon Ball Z ever did. But seeing it in this, it just makes me so happy seeing these characters get along so well. And I, I love that. I just love seeing how Bulma was doing that. But then when Goku was on the fucking bat, oh my god. Like, this is the funny moment, like, or the really funny moment. It's like, Vegeta, I don't want to see Bulma's saggy, you know, he was going to say breast. And when Vegeta gets all upset and all that, I couldn't help but fucking laugh. Oh my god. <laughs> that shit is so funny. So... Yeah, I mean, this episode of Drywall Super, it was a great episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.